Hey guys, today um, from the South Carolina Homeschooling Connection, this is Kim. I'm coming to you live. Um, we have a lot of questions that come in um, frequently asked, and I just wanted to go over one of the ones today um, and kind of tackle some of these questions one by one um, in, the, in the coming days as well. But um, we have... Um, new people that are coming into South Carolina that are moving here and you've homeschooled in other states or you're um, in the public school or the private school or even charter schools here in South Carolina and you're starting to think maybe I want to actually do homeschooling and you're trying to figure out what is this option one, option two, option three mean and so <laughs> it seems very very confusing to, um, when you're first getting started here and so I just wanted to try to help give a little tutorial sometimes it makes sense when somebody explains it better than when you try to read it and so um, option one, option two, and option three are the code of law that covers um, homeschooling. That's sort of what people refer to them by. Um, and so when homeschooling first became an option, there was only option one. And the option was the school district. So you would go down to the school district and you would fill out an application for um, the school board to approve your homeschool. And that's the way it still works. Now, um, when you do homeschooling through option one, you still have to um, do the standardized testing with the school. Um, and so if that's something that's important to you, um, to make sure that you kind of maintain that standardized testing regimen that the school has, then option one may still be a good option for you. Um, we actually did it in our school as my homeschool accountability for a number of years, and it works just fine. It's um, completely free. Um, the problem that we started to run into for me personally was that it um, um, didn't have a lot of the support, the people that I had to turn my paperwork into. Um, I never really saw them. I never could really even reach them by phone. And so um, a lot of people in homeschooling actually like to use an association. And so you kind of can use the school district or you can go to an association. And we actually have two codes of law that cover the associations. And so that's where it starts to seem a little bit extra confusing. Um, but it's really not. Um, option two came into being and it was the first opportunity that people had to be able to um, join an accountability other than the school district and the legislation named one specific association in the code of law and that association is called the South Carolina Association of Independent Home Schools and they actually go by their initials which doesn't seem like it should be a word but it's pronounced like a word it's called SCAES and so it's one of the things that people get to know around here is that one association is called SCAES and um, I don't know maybe it was the lingo in the beginning of homeschooling everybody likes sort of acronyms and so a lot of our associations do have acronym names to them um, that mean something Something else, but SCAES is um, one of the ones that started that. SCAES is one of the ones that started that. <laughs> Don't want to say it so fast that you think um, that it's another word than what they pronounce it. SCAES. It rhymes with days. Um, and they're the, one of the associations, and they um, are called Option 2. They're under the code of law that's Option 2. But then the legislators revised again and um, allowed more associations to come into being. And those associations are all listed under the third option, option three, code of law. Um, and it has special numbers, um, 596547, South Carolina Code of Laws. And you can read all about it if you look it up like that. Um, but it's referred to just kind of by its popular nickname as Option 3. And there are about 30 associations underneath that Code of Law now. Um, and so there's lots of associations to pick from. And the basic oversight that the associations have to do is we have to have um, 50 uh, members 
50 students that participate and um, make sure that everybody is maintaining a minimum amount of um, paperwork. So you as the parent are responsible for doing your record keeping and then you have an association director that you can report to and kind of get in touch with. And the a lot of the association directors are really, you know, experienced homeschoolers and so they understand the path that is uh, the alternative education of homeschooling um, and so they can really help provide a lot of um, resources and support the way that you really want in your homeschool and a lot of encouragement. A lot of people um, get, um, you know, like that panic of, ah! can't do this and the association directors are really really good at um, giving that kind of support and encouragement to go you know what you can make it through this I'm personally an example that can say if I can do this anybody can <laughs> you can totally do this so um, but for option three um, there are a whole variety of services that they add on to what you can get and so it gets like how do I pick one and so um, on my blog on the South Carolina Homeschooling Connection I have created a resource a directory that you can go in and um, kind of compare them what does each one what is their membership cost? Um, when's their open enrollment? Because some of them have deadlines and they don't accept members year round. They have already closed here in the fall. Um, but some of them are open year round. Some of them are statewide groups. So it doesn't matter where you live. You can still join them. Other ones are um, local. So you pick somebody that is close to you and you can actually go into their office and meet them and talk to them. Um, some of them have like bookstores and um uh, some have support groups connected to them, um, just tons and tons of things. Do they offer um, transcript assistance and things like that? So you can go and just kind of compare um, between them and see what kind of things you think m you might want to um, have accessible to you as a new homeschooler um, if you want to choose an association accountability association it's kind of like when you go and you ask a friend you know um, where do you shop what you know if you're new in town where would you go to go grocery shop where would you go to church where would you go to a doctor everybody has preferences so it's good when you can you know talk to other homeschoolers and say hey what's your accountability association find out you know what they like about it and then check those ones out kind of narrow it down from there um, but you really have basically instead of three options option one two and three you really have two paths to go on you have the school district that's your local um, school district where you would be zoned or an accountability association so I hope that simplifies it for you a little bit um, South Carolina is a great place to homeschool um, because we have a lot of resources here um, for you. So welcome if you're new to the state or if you're new to homeschooling, welcome um, and jump right in. We um, hope to get to see you soon. This is Kim with the South Carolina Homeschooling Connection. Thanks.